Once upon a time, there lived on the outskirts of a large forest a poor woodcutter with his wife and two children. The boy was called Hansel and the girl Gretel. He always had very little money, even to buy food. And once, when times were really bad, they had to get by with one piece of bread and butter each day. One night, as he was tossing about in bed, full of cares and worry, he sighed and said to his wife, What's to become of us? How are we to feed our poor children now that we have nothing more for ourselves? I tell you what, husband, answered the woman. Early tomorrow morning, we'll take the children out into the thickest part of the wood. There we shall light a fire for them and give them each a piece of bread. Then we'll go on to our work and leave them alone. They won't be able to find their way home and we shall be rid of them. No, wife, said her husband, that I won't do. How could I find it in my heart to leave my children alone in the wood? The wild beasts would soon come and tear them to pieces. Oh, you fool, said she. Then we must all four die of hunger, and you may just as well go and saw the wood for our coffins. And they argued and argued until he agreed that they must get rid of Hansel and Gretel. But I can't help feeling sorry for the poor children, added the husband. The children, too, had not been able to sleep for hunger and had heard what their stepmother had said to her father. Gretel wept bitterly and spoke to Hansel. Now it's all over for us. No, no, Gretel, said Hansel. Don't worry. I'll find a way to escape. No fear. And when the parents had fallen asleep, he got up, slipped on his little coat, opened the back door and crept out. The moon was shining clearly and the white pebbles which lay in front of the house glittered like bits of silver. Hansel bent down and filled his pocket with as many of them as he could cram in. Then he went back and said to Gretel, It's all right, my dear little sister, and go to sleep. God will not desert us. And he lay down in bed again. At daybreak, even before the sun was up, the woman came and woke the two children. Get up, you sleepy heads. We're all going to the forest to fetch wood. She gave them each a bit of bread and said, There's something for your lunch, but don't you eat it up before lunchtime, because it's all you'll get. Gretel took the bread under her apron, as Hansel had the stones in his pocket. Then they all set out together on the way to the forest. After they had walked for a little, Hansel stood still and looked back at the house. And all the while he kept on holding back again and again. His father observed him and said, Hansel, what are you gazing at there? And why do you always remain behind? Take care and don't lose your way. Oh, father said Hansel. I'm looking back at my white kitten, which is sitting on the roof, waving me bye-bye. The woman exclaimed, What a donkey you are! That isn't your kitten. That's the morning sun shining on the chimney. But Hansel had not looked back at his kitten. But each time he stopped, he had dropped one of the white pebbles out of his pocket to mark the way back home. When they had reached the middle of the forest, the father said, Now, children, go and fetch a lot of wood, and I'll light a fire that you may not feel cold. Hansel and Gretel heaped up brushwood till they had made a pile, 
nearly the size of a small hill. The brushwood was set fire to, and when the flames leaped high, the woman said, Now lie down at the fire, children, and rest yourselves. We are going into the forest to cut down wood. When we've finished, we'll come back and fetch you. When they awoke at last, it was pitch dark. Gretel began to cry and said, How are we ever going to get out of the wood? But Hansel comforted her. Wait a bit, he said, till the moon is up, and then we'll find our way sure enough. And when the full moon had risen, he took his sister by the hand and followed the pebbles, which shone like bright new coins, and showed them the path. They walked on through the night, and at daybreak reached their father's house again. They knocked at the door, and when the woman opened it, she exclaimed, You naughty children! What a long time you've slept in the wood! We thought you were never going to come back. But the father rejoiced, for he felt guilty for leaving his children behind them. Not long afterward, there was again a great shortage of food in the land, and the children heard their mother speak to their father in bed one night like this. Everything is eaten up once more. We have only half a loaf of bread in the house. And when that's done, it's all up with us. Then they fell asleep, and evening passed away, but nobody came to the poor children. They didn't wake till it was pitch dark, and Hansel comforted his sister, saying, Only wait, Gretel, till the moon rises. Then we shall see the breadcrumbs that are scattered along the path. They will show us back to the house. When the moon appeared, they got up, but they found no crumbs, for the thousands of birds that fly about the woods and fields had picked them all up. Never mind, said Hansel to Gretel. You'll see, we'll find a way out. But all the same, they did not. They wandered about the whole night, and the next day, from morning till evening, but they could not find a path out of the wood. They were very hungry too, for they had nothing to eat but a few berries they found growing on the ground. And at last they were so tired that their legs refused to carry them any longer, so they lay down under a tree and fell fast asleep. On the third morning, after they had left their father's house, they set about their wandering again but only got deeper and deeper into the wood. And now they felt that if help did not come to them soon, they must perish. At midday, they saw a beautiful little snow-white bird sitting on a branch, which sang so sweetly that they stopped still and listened to it. And when its song was finished, it flapped its wings and flew on in front of them. They followed it and came to a little house on the roof of which it perched. And when they came quite near, they saw that the cottage was made of bread and roofed with cakes, while the window was made of transparent sugar. Now we'll tuck in, said Hansel, and stuff our faces with the food. I'll eat a bit of the roof. And you, Gretel, can eat some of the window, which you'll find a tasty little snack. Hansel stretched up his hand and broke off a little bit of the roof to see what it was like. And Gretel went to the window and began to nibble at it. At that moment, a shrill voice came out from the room inside. Nibble, nibble, little mouse. The children answered. "'Tis heaven's own child, the tempest wild, "'and went on eating, for they were ever so hungry. "'He was thoroughly enjoying eating the roof "'and tore down a big bit of it, 
while Gretel pushed out a whole round window pane and sat down the better to enjoy it. When four weeks had passed and Hansel still remained thin, she lost patience and decided to wait no longer. Hi, Gretel, she called to the girl. Be quick and get some water. Hansel may be fat or thin. I'm going to kill him tomorrow or cook him. Oh, how the poor little sister sobbed as she carried the water and how the tears rolled down her cheeks. Kind heaven, help us now, she cried. If only the wild beasts in the wood had eaten us, then at least we should have died together. Just hold your peace, said the old hag. It won't help you. Early in the morning, Gretel had to go out and hang up the kettle full of water and light the fire. First, we'll make a pie, said the old witch. I've heated the oven already and rolled the pastry. She pushed Gretel out to the oven, from which fiery flames were already jumping. Creep in, said the witch, and see if it's properly heated so that we can shove in the pie. For when she had got Gretel in, she meant to close the oven and let the girl roast, that she might eat her up too. When they had wandered about for some hours, they came to a big lake. They see no bridge of any sort or kind. Yes, and there's no ferry boat either, answered Gretel. No, answered Gretel. We should be too heavy a load for the duck. She shall carry us across separately. The good bird did this, and when they were landed safely on the other side and had walked for a while, the wood became more and more familiar to them, and at last they saw their father's house in the distance. Then they set off to run, and bounding into the room, jumped up to hug their father. The man had not passed a happy hour since he had left them in the wood, but his wife had died. Gretel shook out her apron, so that the pearls and precious stones rolled about the room, and Hansel threw down one handful after the other out of his pocket. And so all their troubles were ended, and they lived happily ever after. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel to see the latest videos. Thank you.